can go ahead and start. Okay, and you have my slides included, right? Yes, ma'am. Great, thank you. Can you see the screen, Karen? Yes, I can. Thanks, Paul. So welcome to the webinar, um, the, uh, the three speakers today. Karen's gonna kick us off with an introduction and then uh, Michael and I will do introductions when we get to our slides. So Karen, you can take it away. Hey, can I see the first slide? Sure. Um, okay, <laughs> we might wanna come back to that. I had a couple slides that I included. Um, thank you, thank you so much uh, for having us and for hosting our customers today. I just wanna welcome all the um, SCS um, Global Services building and uh, construction and furniture um, certificate holders. And I think you will find this webinar very instructive and hopefully understand how we work to uh, find more visibility for the um, certifications that you um, pursue with us. And next slide. Yeah, just a little background about SCS. I mean, you're our customers, so most of you, um, you know, work with us on a daily basis, but you might not uh, know the uh, entire depth and breadth of everything that we do. Um, we are a global company. Um, we have been in existence for 38 years now. We have, I, I'm sure these numbers are already out of date, but um, we work um, across all major markets and um, that's not just building and construction uh, products, um, but everything from uh, food to forestry to fisheries <clears throat> to metals and mining, uh, you name it. Okay, am I back? Can you hear me again? Yes? Yes. Okay, great. Sorry, uh, it asked me to rejoin as a panelist. Um, and I think most of you know that we um, work with governments, uh, companies and NGOs to help um, customers reach their <clears throat> government regulations, stand out in their markets and uh, demonstrate environmental and social responsibility. And in particular, um, those last two items, stand out in your market and demonstrate your environmental um, and social responsibility is really um, kind of the crux of what this Ecomedes platform can offer. And it offers a visibility to, um, to your certifications that um, allows people to understand um, that you do comply with uh, different um, certifications that they accept uh, for their contracting. Next slide. So this just shows that we're based really throughout the world and um, it's important that uh, we have in-market representation, makes the auditing easier. Next slide. Um, this is just a sort of a, a smattering of a, of a lot of the different partners that we work with. Um, some of these partners are scheme holders um, and others are organ, uh, NGOs like, you know, Well and Reset and Brim and USGBC. Um, next slide. And this is just a, kind of a, a summary of many of the different um, building and construction material certifications that we uh, work with. Um, so most of you uh, kind of fall into one of these uh, certifications. Maybe you have multiple, um, but it's good to know um, that we can represent the entire suite of building and construction uh, certifications that are recognized in the marketplace. And with that, um, I will turn it over to Paul and his team. Wonderful, thank you so much. Michael, you wanna kick us off with the agenda? Sure. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here with you today. I'm Michael Bloom with GSA's Office of Federal High Performance Green Buildings. So I'm with the US government and I've been working um, on the tools that we're sharing with you today for over 10 years. Um, we're gonna, today we're gonna, um, cover a brief introduction to sftool.gov, which is a, a website you all have access to now, and it is a free, no registration necessary kind of website. And then we're gonna review um, the green procurement compilation or the procure side of SFTool. Uh, specifically then, we're going to look at how 
um, our product search aspect of that tool supports federal buyers and external project teams. Um, and talk about how, then Paul will talk about um, how the platform we've created helps SCS certified products to be discovered um, and how they align with our different product category rules. Um, and we'll give you a live demo and uh, talk about the SF Tool Data Enrichment Program, where you have the opportunity to enrich data we already have about your products. And then we'll answer questions uh, at the end. And now we'll start with SF Tool. So um, if you go to sftool.gov, the picture that you see on the left is actually the, the landing page. Um, there is much more to SF Tool than just the procure side, which is our focus today, procurement, procurement, procurement. But um, the tool is actually something we invented and brought to the world over 10 years ago because we realized that very few people went to school to understand how to build sustainable buildings. And we needed to do a better job of of building sustainability into what we did as GSA um, on projects of all sizes, which meant that we needed to speak plain English to people who really in earnest wanted to understand what they were being required to do. That grew into a platform that was from the beginning very user-friendly and very start with the basics, learn the complex stuff kind of site. Um, and that platform then became where we chose to house the green procurement compilation, which was the collection of all the federal environmental rules, regardless of which agency owns them uh, in one place. So we're gonna show you that in a moment. But meanwhile, I'll tell you that SF Tool is a place you can go to actually connect the dots between uh, buildings and health uh, by, do we have uh, sections that help uh, folks understand what kind of changes they can make to their buildings that are cost effective um, using real data from the Department of Energy. Um, we have really extensive material comparisons. We talk um, plainly about net zero energy, all kinds of things in SF Tool. But let's dive into each one of those sections really quick to show you what I mean. So if you click on the learn at the top, you're taking to a landing page with a section on climate, energy, health, and water, and other topics as well. These are, this is the way you discover topics in sustainability as a starting point. Each one of those learn pages are um, organized so that you can start with the basics and then learn more. Um, when you go under plan, we actually cut those uh, pages into multiple categories. We talk about overall strategies and things like integrative uh, design processes, but we also do a data dump from the heads of the best product project managers to talk about, well, what does a sustainable FF&E project look like, furniture, fixtures, and um, and equipment. Uh, what does a major remodel look like and what things shouldn't you forget? That's that section section in the middle of that slide on the right. And then we also talk about big things like net zero and climate adaptation, which is on the far right. Okay, next slide. In the explore section, this was our chance to take people on a tour of a sustainable building where they can make good choices without them having to go anywhere, which works out really well in a time like now uh, or 10 years ago when people weren't traveling. Our green dots are uh, are, are way that we indicate where a sustainable choice can be made and it leads you to a whole bunch of resources where you can do material comparisons and even get the federal requirements for certain kinds of materials. It's a really great interactive section of SF tool. Okay, next section. So we also have apply and train sections. Apply is where you get the um, all of the discussions from the interagency sustainability working groups that are doing this work in federal agencies. It's the system of record for everything they discussed. It's a, a good place to look for case studies especially um, and tools and training and federal tools and training are often open to uh, private sector companies as well. So just because it's got a federal audience as its intended main one, that doesn't mean that you're locked out of learning about these things yourselves if you're not feds. So then on the right hand side, that's the Facilities Management Institute. My office of Federal High Performance Green Buildings, uh, which I can say fast only because I've been with it for 11 years, um, actually is um, responsible for uh, managing the um, federal building personnel uh, Act, which says 
now that we have a lot of sustainable buildings, we better train our facility managers on how to appropriately manage them. But there isn't any money behind that. So what we did is we created this tool that helps people assess what they know and understand their gaps, and then go ahead and use SF tool resources to fill a lot of those, and then also link them to training outside of, uh, of the federal government, oftentimes free, um, to meet those gaps. So that's also an SF tool. But now that we've covered everything else, we'll go to the next slide and talk about procurement. So I mentioned that uh, the Green Procurement Compilation is multiple different agencies worth of federal environmental programs all gathered in one place. We tackle both products and services, and today's talk will be mostly about products, but the service section is really good when it tells, tells you best practices for um, what kinds of language should be in those service contracts, and also eventually what those service providers ought to be buying as part of what they provide as services to the federal government. So it does link directly to a lot of the eco labels that we're talking about today. Um, we also have special sections for Department of Defense, Department of Energy, and Public Building Service that go above and beyond the federal requirements that are here. So what is here? Let's go to the next slide. 27 main categories of stuff, from appliances all the way to vehicles. Um, everything that has a green box around it is where I've worked with Ecomedes and Paul Shariari, your other host here, um, to create an online digital catalog of those things that comply with what we're listing in the GPC. So again, the federal government took all of the different environmental programs and guidance and said, for each kind of product and sub category, let's tell you what you need to do. And then we worked with Paul to make doing that easy and automate as much of it as possible. So let's go to the next slide. Um, this is on the left, what it looks like if you're looking for building finishes. Um, all the major categories in the GPC have subcategories and there are 18 subcategories here. Um, and each of those have their own procurement guidelines because of course, sustainability people like to make things complicated. Well, in truth, we know that we make, that things are complicated and we often struggle with ways to take that complexity and make it easy for people. So here is where we're gathering everything. So we show everything, um, including additional guidance and references that of where you can go to get even the full text of the FAR cases or the laws. Um, but that doesn't get you directly to products. It gets you to, okay, so these are all the rules and they're kind of overwhelming. So let's go to the next page. This is uh, floor coverings. Um, on the When it comes to floor coverings, you see underneath the picture of floor, then this is also floor coverings non-carpet. This is exactly the way you talk about tile, right? Um, no, this is the way that the category has been developed to be um, in, in uh, the system. And Paul and I also worked hard to make sure to harmonize these category names so that people can look for the things that they want under the normal categories and find them here anyway. But floor coverings non-carpet, that's that's what we're dealing with here. And the guiding, the requirements here are BioPreferred, the FP program, and um, also then the EPA recommended specification standards and eco labels. You have Cradle to Cradle and, and um, GECA and Green Circle and NSF ANSI, you can read. So um, all of those are listed. If you were going to go and click on each one of those links, here, it would take you hundreds of, link, of clicks to get to um, information that may or may not, depending on which one of those programs you're looking at, get you to a list of products. So the person who has the best intention may not actually get to the hard work that folks that work with SES have done to have, okay, where's the documentation that this thing is actually sustainable? We want to cut down those number of clicks and get them the excellent data that's available um, much easier than have them do this. Now, I needed to create this page in order to create the transform of, okay, let's use all those rules to create an online digital catalog. So that's what we've done. We've taken the stuff on the left, and then anytime you follow those uh, green binoculars um, that you've seen on some of our example slides, you get taken to the sftool.ecomedes.com website that is essentially automating a search for the things that comply with each of the one of those category rules. 
Um, so what we've done, we take the federal environmental programs up there on the top left, um, the third party eco labels and certifications, and some manufacturer provided information. And that only comes when we've got that manufacturer's product already listed because it complies with one of the first two boxes. And we create the largest curated database of federally compliant products in the marketplace. And we're talking a very significant set of products. Um, and all the specific data is there, over 150,000 products updated monthly, done in a regular cadence. We timestamp things. And it's open to any user that wants to improve their buildings. It's not only open to the feds that I built this for, so they could figure out what to specify or what to um, ask contractors to buy. It's open to the contractors and the subcontractors that need to follow the rules and the specifications we put down. In other words, it's a tool that speaks to all of the audiences simultaneously. So next slide is Paul's. So thank okay. you. I'll be back to answer any questions when we open the floor. Thanks, Michael. Paul Scherner, founder and chief innovation officer here at Ecomedes. And we're going to share with you how the SF tool program actually works. So as Michael covered some of those product categories, what I wanted to start off is just showing you that there's a lot of SCS certification programs that Karen had shown us at the beginning. And I just wanted to show you that every one of the product category rules has an alignment with many of the actual elements that we get from SCS directly. So your investment with SCS to grab all that data and make it easy to look at, uh, we provide that data directly to the federal buyers that, that Michael Bloom and the GSA are supporting. So in every category, we kind of covered non-carpet. Uh, they require recycled content, floor score, indoor advantage, uh, declare and uh, the green squared program. So if you have achieved any of these SCS um, elements, these are all going to get to be provided directly to the federal buyer. So uh, building finishes is one area that we'll cover today. And also construction materials also have similar elements, whether it's recycled content certified by SCS or the Indoor Advantage Gold program. Another way of looking at this is that anytime someone's looking for an alignment with your SCS Indoor Advantage Gold certificate, you can actually do a search inside of Michael's tool and it'll show you all the category rules that require that one piece of data to showcase that you've met the EPA's recommended eco-label specifications or certification. So there's a lot of really good information, but the whole premise of this is to make it really easy for buyers to find that information. So we kind of covered this briefly with Michael, but floor coverings requires consultants, you know, the work that I used to do, or architects or specifiers or buyers or facility managers to essentially go out and look for products that have met one or more of these conditions. There's 12 different conditions just for this one product category. And the data that it references, a lot of it is what Karen showed us, declare, verified health product declarations, recycled content, indoor advantage gold, or the green squared certificate. So rather than having to go out to several different sites, we've amalgamated all that data so a buyer can see over 8,663 actual products made by real manufacturers, but all the compliance data has been already aggregated for them. So they don't have to go out on a huge search uh, for that data. In the live demo, I'll show you how all the certificates that you guys have done with SCS will automatically be date stamped and hyperlinked back to your SCS database. So it'll just flow right through for the user. But essentially what they do when they click this green binocular, imagine like a green digital consultant spinning up, going to all these websites, categorizing only the floor covering products that have met those guidelines, and then throwing them onto your web browser. And that's exactly what happens. Every time you click the binoculars, all that product data will flow through. And since SCS has such a nice database for us to deal with and, and grab data from via API, we have your images, we have all that other stuff that you guys already have with SCS on file. So a lot of that really data rich information can flow through. Another thing I wanted to mention is that if you have multiple certificates and they're coming from SCS, we'll be able to show the, the user multiple certificates under that one designation. So they'll know that they're compliant, but also have access to all that underlying data. Uh, in carpet, same thing happens, slightly different uh, guidelines for carpet, but very similar. And again, four of the data streams that we already have from the SCS database flow automatically through. And then the user can see how many products within this catalog have met bio preferred as a requirement or, or C2C or SCS indoor advantage or an EPD or an HPD. So in the brackets, every one of those counts is how many products also meet those guidelines within that one specific eco-label or, um, or product catalog designation. 
uh, and we'll finally do an example for furniture, similar program. And as you can see, there's lots of different reference standards and eco-labels, and all of these automatically flow through. So BIFMA level that SCS is one of the largest certifying bodies for, declare SCS Indoor Advantage and Indoor Advantage Gold automatically roll through. And if you have an EPD or um, an HPD with them, a life cells uh, slideful assessment or the SCS recycled content data all flows right through to the user. So those binoculars send them basically on a digital um, answer log from a scavenger hunt that they didn't have to go click. So ultimately what we've done is we've aggregated any of the certification data that you've worked with already with SCS and on a monthly basis, we ping the database and update it and synchronize it so that any of the hard work you've done to achieve these designations, if referenced in any federal buying requirement, federal acquisition requirement, or some of the new executive orders around buy clean, which is gonna be the embodied carbon stuff or PFOS free, we'll be able to bring that data in for you so that federal buyers can find your stuff quickly and then essentially click on a button on our site and then contact you. And that's part of the data enrichment we'll talk about in a second is if you have GSA contacts or public sector contents, you can enrich your data by giving that to us. We'll add it to your data stream. And now you'll have a way to have that public sector sales channel a person be contacted directly by a project team. So now I'll stop and ask, ask if there's any questions. We'll be happy to answer some questions now, or we can wait till after the live demo. But if you guys would like to ask any questions, please use the chat or the Q&A, and I'll be happy to stop and answer those questions now before we go uh, any further. Give everybody a couple minutes. I'll also go in here and allow, there's a way for me to allow folks to talk if you'd like to voice a question. That's perfectly okay. Just mute if you're not asking a question. Um, I don't see any questions in chat, so I'll keep going uh, to the live demo. So if you just go to sftool.ecomese.com, that'll bring it up. But I wanted to show you guys a little bit about how those binoculars work. So this is the sftool.gov platform. Uh, if I click on procure, that'll send me the green procurement compilation. And here's all those examples of those specifications. So if I click on building finishes, here's those 18 subcategories and credits. If I go to floor coverings, non-carpet, here's that list of all those buying requirements, uh, EPA recommended specifications, uh, standards, and eco-labels. And here you can see it's a nice robust list, lots of nice kind of iconography, but it is a little bit of work to go through and then find those products in that category that are there. So what we work with Michael and the team at GSA on is these binoculars. And with one click, I'm going to go from those set of requirements to already a pre-curated list of products that meet or exceed those requirements. So there's federal guidelines like bio preferred. There's those EPA recommended specifications and eco-labels. And then there's the additional high performance filters like EPD, GSA contract, health product declaration, life cycle assessment, or living product challenge. Uh, achievement. So those products are in there. You can also then search by brand. So with one click, the federal buyer can see all the brands that have achieved one or more of those designations. And in those parentheses, as I mentioned before, that's going to be the total number of products that have met or exceeded those guidelines. So if you want to ever find uh, your brand in here, you can kind of see what's, what's available there. If I were to click on floor score, that's a further refactoring of those 8,000 products to the 7,800 products that now meet building finishes, floor coverings, non-carpet, and floor score. And you can kind of do this over and over again. And this uh, export is sorted by the popularity. So these are the brands and the products that are most utilized within the, the platform. Uh, if you were to click on a product, you get all the data available from the manufacturer on that. And then multiple certificates can go there. As I hover over this data, you can see that I'll tell you the source of the data, in this case, Tarquette. And then it was last updated on November, uh, December 1st, of 2021. If you find a piece of documentation that you're looking for, it'll hyperlink it back to that actual certificate and it goes right back to SCS Global Services. They are the, the repository of all that certification data. We always send our users back to the, the source of that data. It's the most usable uh, for the clients using the platform. So we always wanna send them back to where that, that truth is, is known. And you can actually expand that horizon and put in other things like recycled content and other pieces of data. You can always contact the manufacturer. That's why we're going to ask you for some of your contact information. That way, if a person's looking for data, they can actually fill that out and send you an email. And then if anyone ever needs contribution documentation within every product page, you can actually say, I'd like to model that against federal guidelines or any of the green rating systems active in North America. Those are also available in that dropdown. 
Uh, but if I wanted to know how this product would help me with federal guidelines, I can hit document. It'll run a calculation, it'll ping the server, and basically not only give you all this data, but it'll actually run the calculation, say this meets the GPC guideline for this product category and it's compliant. So it meets an executive order. So we not only have the data, but we, we take it one step further. We wanna kind of serve as that digital assistant to the buyer. But as we mentioned, this is available to any of your dealers, your sales reps, anyone can use this information to make a better uh, product decision. So you can search and evaluate products in this platform directly by clicking on one of these icons and finding say plumbing systems, every product that is WaterSense certified would be available to you. You can also look at federal programs like WaterSense and other type of designations. So it's a really powerful way of looking at the product data uh, directly either by a product category. Another way that a lot of people like using it is looking at it by eco label. So you know, uh, um, SCS has four scores. So you can just find the four score database. And then this is a four score search but then it also shows you what other product in, in um, elements you could have. So you could look for four score and SCS Indoor Advantage Gold. You can press both these as a filter and now you'll have the results of products that have met one or more of those designations. You can keep going through this process, even looking for things that maybe have an SCS recycled content designation as well. So now you have some more products that you can evaluate. And again, anytime you click on a baseball card, you'll get to a product detail page and that has information. In this case, they added the GSA contact email name, phone number, and title. So here, if you do want to put that data in, that's part of our data enrichment program. We can put that in there. And that way people know how to get a hold of whoever it is you'd like them to get a hold of. And again, here's that indoor advantage uh, gold certificate with a hyperlink back to uh, the source of that data. So you'll be able to always provide that without having to do any of the work. Um, so we'll go back and do a couple more things in here. So a really, really powerful database. It, you know, pulls together all the things that are listed across those uh, 27 categories, any place where we can go grab data from a good data source like SCS, certification partner, we try to bring that data in there and make it very easy for people to do the searches for product data that they might be looking for, and also allow them to build projects. Many things are bought in conjunction with other things. So if you create an account, which is free to do, I'll log out to show you how easy it is. You just got to sign up, log in, it's free for anyone to do it. Uh, just put in an email address and a password. The only reason we need that is to save your, your work, save kind of your homework. And that'll open up a new feature called projects. And that is just a way to organize all my product data from an entire project. So I'll jump into an example here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll do this demo right here. So here's a project demo from last year. And here's two products that I put into an evaluation. All the data that comes along with that product, all those PDFs you might have seen on one of those pages or you're organizing currently on your desktop are all aggregated. You just type in the quantity unit price. In this case, it'll have some energy and water analysis built, baked in from these products. And then at the very bottom, I can just say, I wanna run it against federal guidelines and every ingredient in a project will be evaluated. I'm gonna go find one that has more products in it. Um, go to this GSA Greenville office um, instead. And what it allows you to do is aggregate product data across multiple manufacturers, across any product category. So obviously a, a large scale kind of renovation, uh, does multiple energy analyses. So every product that we put in there from Energy Star will actually revaluate when the break even happens, convert kilowatts to, to dollars, gallons saved by fixtures to dollars. At the very bottom, you can run this um, entire project load, all the products in it against federal guidelines, lead, and in this case, well. And with one button, evaluate this entire purchase across all those brands. It'll give me a total for the project cost of 164,000 for that procurement. And it'll show me all the federal guidelines that have been met as a project and all the lead credits I would also support in that endeavor. And then also all the well credits. So even though the federal government might not be certifying every space, it still can run the calculations and you can run the calculations on how your products might've been able to help them achieve their guidance um, energy calculation, water calculation, and then every one of the individual products in that project will have all their subdivided data underneath it, along with how it complied or co um, added credits to federal guidelines lead. So you have an overall project report, and then every individual product has the product detail pages, plus how it actually supported the overall project, and all that is just downloadable as a PDF. So without doing a lot of work, all this data will be updated and then I'll create a downloadable PDF that you can then share with your project team um, to make the documentation a little bit easier to do. 
Um, so I'll stop there and see if anyone has any specific questions or would like me to cover something else. I think I've allowed everyone the ability to just ask a question verbally if you'd like. So if you'd like to do that or use the chat or Q&A feature, happy to do it that way. But I want to make sure I cover any examples that might be most beneficial to all of you. Oh, it looks like there's a great question in the chat here. All right. Paul's been showing a lot of info attached to floors, but lighting appears to be very sparse with somewhat dated federal data and not so many new programs declare well. Are there efforts to add new programs to lighting anytime soon or in the works? Yeah. So the question is related to, to lighting. So lighting data for, for right now comes from two data sources. Uh, the federal program, uh, Energy Star, um, is the main driver for that data. And that data is sparse in terms of what pictures and descriptions and things like that that we have. If you hover over the data, the last time it was updated was uh, January 9th of 2022. So anytime we have data coming in from a source, it'll be listed there. If there are products that have achieved well, uh, declare any of those other certifications, if it's a data source, we'll be able to add that to it. But the vast majority of federal programs around lighting are being driven off of either the Energy Star database. There's no FEMP um, approved lighting database that we can pull data from. As soon as it's available, we will do that. And this is a real reason why we want to enrich data and meet with manufacturers like yourselves is get that data enriched and at least give us better understandings of what that product is. Most eco-labels, unlike SCS, do not have pictures and descriptions and a lot of hyperlink data. They kind of are more databases for sustainability nerds to go find data in. We try to at least take that data and make it a little bit more useful and then make that data more relatable in terms of like an energy calculation. So here, if you wanted to know how 100 of these light bulbs or 1,000 of these light bulbs would help change your uh, project energy consumption, you can kind of take a look at a on the fly energy uh, calculator. Again, it's not meant to um, replace engineering, but it's just gonna take the data from this fixture that has 65 lumens per watt, or it uses 10 watts of energy per uh, hour of consumption. And then you can take a look at kind of using that data to make better decisions. But I agree, uh, we are always looking to make our data better. And that's why we have a data enrichment program going on to make right. some of the eco labels come alive. Mike, if well, you- Well, I'm gonna ask if um, I can ask for some clarification. So. Um, it sounds to me like the person who asked this question has products in lighting that would have a declare or a well um, designation on them in addition to um, the existing federal programs. Am I understanding that correctly? You can answer in the Can chat. you hear me at all? Oh, yeah, you can hear me. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Well, thank you for asking. Um, yes, we do have third-party assessed um, declare labels um, with SCS. Um, we received them in 2019, 2020. I think it was 2020. And um, th this year is the first year we are, um, we, we just basically maintain them. Um, and uh, I already reached out and Haley mentioned that I will be in contact with her to see how we can add ourselves to your list. Right now, um, our company, Fine Light, is not listed in the whole system. I already checked it. But um, we do have a declare label actively available. And with that declare label, we can fulfill lead requirements to get certain points and also well. Um, so we, we can fulfill them based on the declare label third-party assessment. Got it. Yeah, so the, the reason why you're not showing up on this platform for us is that SF tool is curated only based on the green requirements of what the, the GSA and the federal government has. So when we go to lighting products, um, we're only going to be looking for products that have met one of these kind of designations. So I'll go to like, say, uh, LED fixtures or luminaries. You know, it's either FEMP or it's going to be for light bulbs. It's going to be just Energy Star or GSA Proven Ground. Declare is not a uh, acknowledged rating uh, platform for these kind of products. Our other platform, products at ecomies.com, if you've achieved the Declare label, I can send you a link afterwards. And I'm sure your light is popping up on that, uh, but it's just not part of this program because this program only has products that have met either one of two of these uh, designations. So nowhere in lighting is Declare used. It's used in other product categories, but it, as a product rule, these are very product category specific designations. So we can talk offline about how. Right. Um, okay, this is specific to energy use, not to, to sustainability or implementation. Of the yeah, because we've curated our main platform to meet these guidelines no different than we do for other building owners. So it's just like looking for things only within their 
Uh, I use the example of like a Whole Foods, only things that are, you know, organic and fair trade and shade grown would be showing up on this lot. Well, we use these designations as that. So slightly smaller uh, aperture in terms of data, but we'd love to follow up with you after the. Uh, Perfect. There's another question, Paul, you wanna take a first stab at the, what criteria we use to select additional high performance filters? Yeah, so the, the things that are required in the, the GPC are clearly labeled as either federal programs or uh, EPA recommended specifications. So that's why these things are organized the way they are. The additional high performance filters are just additive. So you can't get in the platform just by having something in the ad additional high performance filters. These are like, I would consider like tiebreaker type elements. So EPDs are included in here currently as additional high performance filters, but you had to have achieved something else up here in either a federal program or an EPA recommended standard. This just, you know, we had the data, so we just wanted to make sure people could see it. Uh, FSC is example, um, health product declarations is another example. So these are just additional pieces of information on top of something that might've been already registered as either one of these EPA right. recommended programs and or a federal program. Right, and as the product owner of SF Tool, the additional high performance filters serve as a kind of beta for me to see are these useful to the people who are coming to the tool to find compliant, federally compliant products? Um, and things like um, the current executive order that has our attention turned to carbon or has our attention turned to um, limiting uh, PFAS uh, chemicals. Um, those are things that um, may not that we may not be able to sort um, from. Uh, those top categories from now, but by allowing an additional high performance filter to be active, if I do have that information or access to that information, it's a place where I might be able to show people how many products are in the market that might actually meet those needs or those new requirements at the moment. That's why we've taken uh, steps to make sure that we're, those were separate from what you find above. Yep. Any other questions? So, uh, Michael and Paul, so just, just to follow up on Bernhard's question, it sounds like he's asking why wouldn't those high performance um, categories be also listed in lighting? Those additional filters that yeah. you scroll down to. So, so in lighting to get on the platform, he would ah, ah, either gotcha. Energy Star or GSA Proving Ground or FEM. That would then allow me to showcase the stuff. I think if I go to just products.ecomuse.com, which is our main platform. Uh, I think I'm spelling this right. I'm not sure, but uh, I go to find light. Maybe it's this. Perfect. Uh, and then I can see that he has some products that are DLC specified. He had a slightly different uh, uh, find light. And maybe this ink will give me results. I mean, let me do it a different way. Let me go to lighting and see certifications. This is the world of fun eco labels. Uh, so if I go to declare and I go to product category, I go to, where is lighting? Oh, I don't see it. So I'll, I'll, I'll have to find it offline. It, it's in there. It's just, we have to figure out where it's categorized. And this is the, the fun of data, but also sometimes it becomes a little harder to find results because the way the data is categorized from all the different certification bodies, it's somewhat slightly uh, maddening because everyone uses different product categories, different eco labels use different product categories. And then Michael has a very strict regiment of what makes it into their platform. So we can kind of take that offline, but we do have some products from you. It's just not coming in from Declare, it's coming in from DLC. So we'll fi figure out what that is all about. Any other questions on like the platform, how your SCS data flows through? Not all product categorizations will make it onto this platform because of these rules, but all of your data does come into our main platform. So if you ever want to do a one-on-one -on -one call, we'll be happy to schedule 30 minutes and just show you everything we have from every source. And sometimes it illuminates that every certification body you do work with might have a slight different interpretation. And the way the computer reads it and we, the way we index every night over a million products, if you have a comma after ink, if you have a dot after ink, if you have a space between your name and ink, all of those are registering as a different brand because the consumer is taking it in from five to six different data sources and it creates another thing. We can, we can clean all that up in the data enrichment process. 
which we're going to share details about in a moment. Yeah. All right. So I'll go to that. That might uh, illuminate. So just to cover, this is free for anyone to use. Any buyer can use it. Your project team can use it. Some contractors can use it. Your distributors can use it. Your sales reps can use it. They can create a free account, answer questions via RFI, RFPs very quickly. Here's all the products from Fine Light that meet this. Here's all the products from, uh, you know, flooring manufacturer, cleaning products manufacturer, a ceiling manufacturer. Just provide all those filtered results back out to the project team. You can compare products. You can see your products against someone else's in a category. See how many people in that category have an EPD or a floor score certificate, kind of see where you're at in the marketplace. You can create projects to analyze multiple products at the same time and then track your individual use over time. And the real driver is because we want to make it easier for both sides of this marketplace to have an achievable goal in front of them. So if we can simplify compliant product discovery for buyers, which is just doing all their homework for them in a scavenger hunt that's automated, then more than likely they can actually put green things in their shopping cart, or their project cart, or specification, because if they do those two things easier and faster, our belief is that their buildings will actually start performing better, be healthier, and then generally save them money. Because this is both time. As a, as a person that spent 20 years of his time in the consulting part of this realm, this is where a lot of time is spent by everyone. The buyer, the seller, and everybody in between is an influencer. So there's not only time savings just by using the platform, but then eventually, if you put better things into the products, better lights, longer lasting furniture, longer lasting flooring, then actual operational benefits get, get added. You know, don't put PFAS in a building. Don't, you know, don't put things in the building that have too much of embodied carbon. There's lots of ways to drive performance in this process if you're on the buying side. We also simultaneously want to make this an amazing tool for you as a manufacturer or as a vendor of products. Simplify your product position. You don't have to guess whether or not your products meet or don't meet federal guidelines. Our platform kind of can do that for you. And if you want to position more products with it, we can kind of show you maybe there's some certifications you might have to go get to make it underneath that, 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 that high bar that they've set. You can also streamline customer support because you're now not having to dream up how these products align with lead or, or rating systems with the federal government. That's automated for you. And then ultimately you're delivering higher performance products to those projects so that owner can enjoy a much better process. So to do that, one of the things we'll engage with you guys if you'd like to is looking at all your data that's currently in our platform. We can share that with you via Google Sheet or Microsoft Excel and then allow you to add more data. So your brand name alignment might need to get fixed. So we'll be happy to help you with that. Product SKU name alignment. If your product is already the same brand name across every certification body and it's the same name, we are probably automatically curating all your product certificates perfectly for you without you having to lift a finger. So we'd happily show you that. Getting some SKU numbers, images, descriptions. So much of our work in the world now is going digital. The more digitized content you have, the easier it is for not only you to position a product, but then other platforms that are going to be, you know, distributors and retailers, they can do it a lot easier. Category, subcategory, and type is one of the main things that we work with folks on to make sure it's exactly how you want it to be in front of the federal buyer. So we have things like multi-purpose cleaners labeled one way, and then we have 12 other eco labels that label them something different. Just by changing multi-purpose cleaners might make you get into the platform because your categorization is correct. You have UPC, UN, SPC numbers, we can add that. Most important contact information for sales or GSA contract information. If you're already on a schedule, we'll be happy to add that. There's some other things that are coming online like Buy America Act compliance, uh, like I mentioned, PFAS, even carbon. Those are all things that we can help you add to the existing data that we have. It's a very simple spreadsheet. We'll download everything we have about your brand. We'll tell you who we got it from, in this case, SCS. And then you guys can help us just fill in the blanks where we might not have that information and create more fidelity with that process. So it's a straightforward thing. I'll send you guys this uh, deck and a, a recording of this training. You guys can reach out to us. We'll schedule a little meeting one-on-one. -on -one. We'll go through whatever we have on you and then give you some uh, color-coded spreadsheets to work on so we can kind of align your data in the proper format. And with that, I'll stop and see if there's any other questions uh, based on what I just kind of covered quickly. Actually, before you take questions, I just want to say that from my perspective as somebody who's worked to curate the data behind all these products, um, I really appreciate um, manufacturers and vendors like yourselves that actually take the time to have your products certified and, and, and um, become part of this universe. But I also struggle with 
wait, really all the data is there, but what's missing is a picture. So you won't go find an item on our site. Um, I, this data enrichment process has a lot of plus sides for folks that engage with it. And a lot, one of those major plus sides is um, having a site that is so rich in sustainability criteria come across more like the buyer sites that are many of the people that we're trying to convince to buy this way um, expect. Um, and when uh, other eco labels aren't the same as SES with having pictures already, it's a it, it's it's a critical step that we need to take to to provide that additional information. Yeah, it's, it's great having a certification partner like SCS to have all this really, really rich data available to us at our fingertips, because without that, it's really hard to help a buyer make a decision, because if it was just a blurred out image saying image not available, you'd be surprised how much a little bit of a description, some contact information can really help a buyer have a rich in, environmental um, understanding of a product. Exactly. Are there any other questions? Uh, don't see any others in chat or Q and A. You're more than welcome to, to chime in. We have another 12 minutes or so together, um, but I'll send you guys a link to schedule a meeting if you guys would like to talk just one on one, and we can preemptively grab your data and take a look at it and see what's going on. Does everyone think this will be helpful on positioning your products with the federal buying network? It's not just the GSA as a buyer. There's all the different agencies within our federal government that are doing a really good job and uh and having done this for private and public sector um you know institutions i gotta say that their organization of like what they define as green is really helpful because it's very straightforward and logical and i can say that for a lot of the other buying requirements I, i've had to chase down this data for over 25 years and when i see like okay this is a category wallboard gypsum and drywall here are the things that we care about it's a very, very straightforward way of saying, okay, I know what products have, meet, have met most of that. And in this case, we have actually all of these certification databases already linked up. So when I click on these things, these are the 93 products that meet those guidelines. And then all those eco labels that were asked for in the search are all part of my downloadable uh, standards documentation. Set. So here's Declare, here's GreenGuard, here's SCS, and here's a, uh, LCA. So all that information is available to us with one click, and then that buyer doesn't have to scratch their head and go, I wonder where all that information lives. And it's all being updated on a monthly basis. So that's another nice thing. Um, do that at minimum once a month. So we're not getting any new questions, but I could ask the same question, Paul, in a different way. Is there any pain point that any of you experience that we're not addressing in this tool? Awesome. Okay. Thank you all for the time. Uh, I'll be sending out a follow-up email uh, later today or first thing tomorrow. If you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, we'll send the recording and we're going to be doing these type of trainings uh, for the remainder of the year. So uh, reach out to your SCS representative and find out when the next one is or share the recording that we'll be putting out uh, shortly to all of you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome.